Hello guys and welcome to it. One day maybe that'll be Oh I should close the window. Hello. I have zero notes. <sighs> just got off work. Just finished work. Ate lunch. And then went home. I have a pile of a few days of dishes to do. And then I need to prepare dinner. That's the plan for this evening. I was thinking about the fact that this thing here, okay, my camera's still recording. <laughs> this thing. This project is the only thing I'm consistent with at the moment. If this is episode 12, then it's the 12th week in a row that I'm doing this. Usually I do it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday or even the day before to release it on Thursday. But today is a Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. I didn't do it early enough. Because my, well, no, because I wasn't organized enough. But yesterday, I don't work at dinner at my uh, job place normally. I don't work evenings. But yesterday, my manager asked me to come for the evening. And the reason that I don't work evenings is because trying to get my life, trying to get a good routine going, get, get my life in order, so to speak. I like, going, I like waking up early, which means I have to go to bed early. And as a result, I can't finish work at midnight. That's no bueno. I used to work dinner. And as a result, I would eat dinner at midnight and go to bed at one and wake up at eight. But a few months ago, that changed. I only work in the morning now. So I can go to bed early. And it's crazy how this small yesterday, so working yesterday until dinner, that completely fucks me up. One small, you know, thing falls out of place and the whole tower of good habits and consistency falls off. And that's not really the thing that has led to this change. But I've been very inconsistent with some things recently. Once again, this thing here is the only thing I've been consistent for, with for the past 12 weeks. Nothing else. And I was watching one of, the, one of those YouTube, either YouTube videos a few days or even two weeks ago about, you know, what, how to become successful. What are the things? What are the keys? What are the, things you need to focus on. You, we've all heard this. I, I don't know what the term, there's a name for it. When in a given company, 10% of the employees does like 90% of the work. That's exagger exaggerated. It's more like 30% maybe does 70% of the work. And in that 30%, 30% of them does 70% of that group. The idea that that's kind of how, that's how the world works something curved, maybe, I don't know, it has a name. And it's the same with anything in terms of if you want to learn something new, learn a new language. If you focus on the right, you know, small few things, I don't know, for, you focus on a small percentage of the language, but that will actually open up much more, it will, it will, you will be closer to being fluent with just that small percentage of words than if you were to go at it randomly, like learning the word, the word in French, anticonstitutionnellement. I think that's the longest word in French. Useless. I've never used it. And if you want to learn French, you, you learn a specific you know, list of words and, and sentences, etc., and that unlocks a large percentage 
of the ability to speak that language. Same with everything, apparently. Apparently that's how it works. It seems to be the case. And likewise, with being successful, being good at anything, focus, if you focus on the right things, you can speed up your, your growth. And so we had, there was this guy talking about the main things that are important and focus being one of the three keys, I think. Yeah, I think that was that focus because he kind of breaks it down into starting with, so you think what you need is time, you know, but actually it's not time. It's the ability to use that time well. And so that is focus. You need energy and you need focus. I'm not sure if these two were separate. I imagine they were. Anyways, to maximize your abilities to be successful in your in any given um, category, in any given field, that's what I was looking for, you need to be able to focus and have energy. And so everyone knows this as well, probably, that going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time and getting eight hours of sleep, some people are different, but most people getting your eight hours, these all benefit to you being at your best and performing at your best. So going to bed early, waking up early, being focused. I also downloaded this plugin that blocks YouTube now. It blocks recommendations and comments, which the comment section is the best thing about, you know, the internet, really. <laughs> but it's for a good reason. So slowly but surely cutting things out, removing things, right? Doing less and doing it better. So YouTube. It's important, I suppose it's important when you're trying to do something that you see progress, right? That's what motivates you when you see progress. And with sugar, for example, I'm very happy with where I am with sugar at the moment because someone gave me, a, I don't know, a third of a cookie today, those big ones, and I ate it and it just gave me a headache and it didn't even taste good, it was horrible which is amazing because my tolerance to sugar now is very low. It used to be very high. That would have been nothing to me. It's also interesting to think about how bad I feel right now after I ate this and how I would eat 10 times that every day, you know, a month ago. But that is progress. I'm seeing progress there. I'm seeing progress with my weight, which I'm happy about. And these might seem inconsequential in a way. I want to be an artist, a filmmaker, a graphic designer, make graphic novels, make films. And these small things don't seem like they contribute to these goals. For example, gaining weight, it seems, you know, like it's something different completely to my goals. But it, it's like I'm at war with myself in a weird way and I have to show myself that I have to teach myself how that's how the world works that you do something con continually you know repeatedly for a long time and it's boring and it's tedious and it might be hard and eventually you get results from that and it seems in a weird way like I can't grasp that entirely it's it's strange because I used to draw all the time as a kid and I'm, I'm pretty good at drawing although for the past almost 10 years I haven't drawn consistently but I got to a point around I don't know 16 17 when I was actually studying in college where I was drawing every day and getting better and I was really good for my age and all my life I had been told that I was really good at drawing 
and I don't, but I have no concept of what it took to become good. It was so natural to draw, to draw every day, all the time, anywhere, any surface I could gain access to, I would draw on. And so it was quite effortless to become good at drawing. Now, presently, it's quite useless. I'm not, I'm not using that skill. But once again, I'm, I'm quite confused at my inability to stick to something the same way I did with drawing for my whole life. And so I'm hoping that with these small things like gaining weight, like quitting sugar, quitting mindless entertainment and distractions, these, on one hand, these will reinforce this idea in my mind that I just need to slowly but surely build myself up, that I build myself up, one. And two, I guess they could have a com the compound effect of clearing my mind, taking the fog away, the fog from, you know, being distracted. I'm also thinking about what this is. I'm still wondering what this is that I'm doing right now. Is this just a therapy session that I'm broadcasting to the entire world? Well, not quite. I'm not that open and transparent. As I've said multiple times before, the point of this is actually, it's just doing it. The point of this is doing it. So, but I have to think about how to make it better, of course. Otherwise, there's no point if there's no growth. Simple things, right? Basics. Eye contact. Well, I mean, that's one that's not too hard to stick with. But, how do I say this? Hmm. But I have to define what this is before I can think about how to do it better, right? And you start a YouTube channel and you start making videos on YouTube. Naturally, the, the immediate interpretation by anyone would be that you're trying to grow your YouTube channel because there are people on YouTube there. Well, there's many people that are ubiquitous on YouTube. I like that word. <laughs> ubiquitous people that are everywhere that we all know that represent youtube in a way and they are making a living on youtube and that's their that's their job and there's many different niches you say niches doesn't matter and kind of groups of people who do a certain thing on youtube and there's many people who are who aspire to that and so, I am not currently thinking about wanting this well to be seen by m many people, actually, right? Because it's still, this whole thing is still in its infancy. And there's not much appeal yet. So the goal is not to gain a large audience or an audience at all, right? The goal is to do it, is to be more, to do it better. Right, that's the goal. That's the goal, to do this better. Once again, but what is it? It's a practice for letting go of needing to sound good. That's a good way to describe it. That's one thing. That's one thing. It's an important thing because it is intimidating. Well, not it isn't really intimidating anymore. Actually, two weeks yesterday, I went climbing with my brother. We go weekly, this indoor climbing gym. And the week before, we had gone climbing, and we had this short 
conversation about how people view others, essentially. And this idea that he wouldn't... The idea of walking around shirtless in public, or even with a tank top, he doesn't like it for, for himself because he feels like it seems like you're trying to show off. It seems like you're trying to... Yeah, it seems like you're trying to show off. And I love be... Uh, well, I love sleeveless shirts. I find them more comfortable. And I... If it's hot outside, I'll take my shirt off because it's comfortable. And as you can see, I just... <laughs> the fewer... The fewest amount of clothes I can wear, the better I feel. I just like being comfortable. So the reason is not to show off or... Not that there's anything to show off, right? But one day I'll be big, right? I'll look, I'll look like a tank. And I'll still feel the same, you know? I'll still think I'm more comfortable with, uh, with, without sleeves. So I'll wear sleeve, uh, sleeveless shirts. And people will think, oh, look at this guy, you know, trying to show his guns, <laughs> trying to get attention. So the point is this, this loop that exists in our heads, right? That we all have for different things, some more than others. This idea that people are looking at us or that they care. And so, so I told him, because I think a few weeks ago it was really hot in the gym and I asked if I could take my shirt off. Actually. Yeah. And anyway, it all goes back to the point that I told him, why, you know, why do, do you wear a shirt without sleeves? Why would you take your shirt off? Blah, blah, blah. And for example, in my case, I'm always shirtless almost. And I do it to be comfortable. So if people interpret the situation as whatever they want to interpret it as, that's none of my business and it doesn't matter. And I told him that that you shouldn't care about people's perceptions. Not that that's something that I apply well in my life, but it's something that I do know to be true. And yesterday, after going to the climbing gym, I went to work in my sleeveless shirt. And one of my colleagues made the comment. What was it? Um, He said... Who are you trying to show off to? And it wasn't mean-spirited or aggressive or anything. He just said what he was... He, he, he just said that. And it made me kind of laugh because I thought about how a few days prior we had talked about this with my brother. And I had told him specifically, you know, people are not looking at you, they don't give a shit. If they do, it doesn't matter. But chances are this, you know idea is only in your mind and no one will ever come to you and be like oh you're trying to show off or it doesn't matter right and then a week later someone actually pointed out to me and you know I thought about it and I thought no one you know I'm just comfortable but why did he say it and so my guess is that part of the reason he said it was that he, well, he's self-conscious as well, right? He wouldn't wear a sleeveless shirt because he's thinking about what other people might say or think. And so when he sees someone doing it, because he has this idea in his mind of people judging him, he thinks <laughs> how do I say this? Because he thinks that one thing he thinks that the worst thing that people might think if he were to wear a sleeveless shirt is oh what who are you trying to show off to? That's his worst case scenario. And as a result, when he sees someone else do it, that's where his mind goes. Maybe. I don't know. 
I still ha- I still don't have any notes on this fucking. Don't swear. I still don't have any notes here. Why am I looking down? Last week I did the poem, but the screen was all black, right? <sighs> I'll do the same one again because actually I didn't learn a new one. I need to find a new one. I need to find a new one from here. I need it to be on a single page. Well, that's a single page because then I can keep it in my pocket. Next one I'll learn is L'Avertisseur. Well, I like the way it starts. It's really short. I just ripped a page from a book, right? That's sacrilegious, isn't it? But the page that there, the pages they're falling off. It's my grandpa gave me this. The sentence my grandpa gave me this doesn't even sound real. My grandpa gave me this. It that's I'm saying this because it's the type of sentence you I think most people have heard. I was gonna say a million times, right? Which is also a cluster of words that doesn't sound real because we've all heard it a million times we've all heard my grandpa gave me this before I think I'm sure there's a million a million movies that use that sentence my grandpa gave me this my grandpa gave me this cliches I'm not heading anywhere with this my grandpa gave me this. I just want to... If you repeat the same word over and over, it stops making sense, all right? It's, it's like just noise. It's... That's... I used to do meditate. And as far as I understood it, that's how transcendental meditation works to a degree. You repeat a word constantly as you're meditating. A word that doesn't actually mean anything, that you don't associate with anything. I remember when I used to do that successfully. That was nice. I have stopped meditating because it was just a waste of time. I can't do it at the moment. But when I could, it was amazing. Just repeat the word over and over again. Because trying to empty your mind is impossible. It's like when you tell someone to not, don't think about the pink elephant. We've all heard this a million times. But instead, you actually think, or you don't think pink elephants, because that's a thing that exists. We just repeat the word. And that way, instead of trying to empty your mind, you're actually focusing on something. But that thing happens to be emptiness, I suppose. That's clever. That's really clever. Yeah, my grandpa gave me this. He has another version of it where the pages are not falling off I think so he gave me the one where the pages are falling off because he's smart I don't oh that's a very short poem next one I don't take care of items that 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 well l'avertisseur for next week still no notes I talked about how to do this thing better here this thing doing it better Eye contact, something I mentioned. And then it's all about this thing here. How to do this better. Standing up straight, important. Actually, hand, I was gonna say hand contact, but it's eye contact, hand movement. How about eye movement and hand contact? I start touching the, no. Hand movement, gestures and eye contact, important. Because this is a practice for letting go and needing to sound good. Therefore, it's actually a practice for learning to sound good. Right? That's the point. But this is a practice for letting go of needing to sound good. Speaking without speaking fluently. There was this video I saw on YouTube. This woman who doesn't have an internal monologue. I don't get it. That's the end of that thought. So, eye contact, hand gestures, and then fluent delivery of information through language. 
through vocal expression, through oration, right? One of the notes that ChatGPT gave me whenever I did the thing where ChatGPT gives me feedback. Monotonous. Wait, but ChatGPT told me it didn't have access to the internet prior to... No, since 2021. But it gave me feedback on the video. What? I'm confused. It did tell me at some point it couldn't access the internet after somewhere in 2021. Therefore, it couldn't give me feedback. But it gave me feedback on my video. And it was pretty spot on. In hmm. Because it gave me feedback that was completely stupid. Clearly useless. Calling me Doc- Dr. G. A professional voice coach. Right? That was useless. But then it gave me one where I said I was monotonous. And that was the one that was like... That was the one that made me think... Oh, you're paying attention. You're useful. Anyways, mon- monotonous. Not being monotonous. It's like, <laughs> oh, I did, I did title an episode almost aggressive at some point. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. G. Almost, almost, I was going to say almost impressive. I like the title too. But no, almost aggressive. Almost aggressive. There's a line, there's a divide between. It's so fucking obvious, right? We all know this, but there's a very big divide between how you think you're perceived, which is in reality is how you perceive yourself, and how you're actually perceived. There's a huge divide. We all know this. There's a divide. How. A very simple example, when you're, when you're chewing food, like th- the sounds you hear, right? It's in your head. The, the food is actually in your head, the food you're chewing. So the, what you hear is kind of, it's so loud. It's, it's right there, right? It's inside your head. It's so loud and overwhelming sometimes if you're chewing crisps in like in an empty, dark room with no one around. Just silence, right? The the sounds of the crisps is really loud. Then if you see, if there was someone sitting next to you in that room and they were chewing the crisps, it would be loud, but it wouldn't be as loud. And it wouldn't have this aggression, right? Of being inside your head. But it's the same with everything. I'm saying this because I... It seems that every day I'm reminded of this. That the people who are doing their thing, who are doing it successfully, people who are good orators and the people who are good in social situations and who make people comfortable, who are good at hospitality, those people, right? Seeing, looking at them, right? They come off as just competent and they're good at what they do, right? Then trying to mimic them, I don't even try really. But just the idea of trying is, it seems like, no, that would be way too much. That would be, that would be stupid. I suppose this here is where I need to practice, right? This. Just thinking about all the YouTube videos I've ever seen, right? The good ones, where there's a person speaking. It just works, right? It's just like music. It just, it sounds good. They know what they're talking about. They're doing it, blah, blah, blah. Sounds good, it sounds believable, they're passionate, it's working. But then thinking about how they feel from from on the other side. Right? Hmm. Where was I going with this? Where I was going is that exaggerate, right? On this side of the camera here, I need to, I need to throw out more energy. I need to exaggerate in the hope. Maybe I need to go too far. Then look back and see, oh, actually, this seems fine. It doesn't seem 
extra. It doesn't seem over the top. It doesn't seem. I was looking for a word. Not extraneous. Not extraordinary. Excessive. Right. It doesn't seem excessive. When when you're watching this on a screen, it doesn't seem excessive. Because actually, I've I've done recordings, right? These, where I felt like at some point I was full of energy and I you know I was energetic. I wasn't monotonous and all that shit. Then I look at it. And I'm like, same shit. Same shit. So I need to. I need to. Yes. I need to throw. Was the expression the kitchen sink? Whatever. I need to. I need to push even more. I I need to feel like I'm doing too much. I need to feel like I'm ridiculous and I'm exaggerating too much. Right. That's what I need to feel. Because this is a safe space, isn't it? I'm alone in a room with a plastic box and a bunch of plastic boxes everywhere and wooden boxes and metal boxes, right? Well, that's a bit like when you keep repeating a word and it makes no sense and you feel insane. Saying that makes me feel quite strange. I am in a room with a plastic box I'm in a room with my, by myself at the moment, speaking out loud, staring into a mirror. Yep. Where I was going with this is, this is the place to fail. This is the place to go too far and learn, right? Since I am not confident enough to do it with strangers, with actual people, with physical beings in my presence, right? So this is a place. This is a place. I don't know. This is the place. This is the place. I'm hungry. My back aches. This is a pretty full to that pretty short the Delphonics. Actually another thing is articulation. Keep stumbling on my words. I it's fucking annoying. Why? I'll be serving food at work and I'll just drop a whole sentence. It will just be blah, 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 blah. nonsense. I speak too fast. It's like my handwriting. I write too fast and I can't read it afterwards. Just need to slow down. But yeah, I speak too fast and it's incoherent as a result. Right, that's another thing I need to work on. Being more fluid, more coherent, speaking like Donald Trump. He's, you know, he's, he's he has this ridiculous way of speaking. Right, finding the way that you speak. That's an interesting thing. It's just like an outfit. Well, to a degree. It's, it's you. Right. The way you speak, that is you. That is who you are. Someone who speaks fast, speaks slow. Someone who's confident when they speak. Someone who's, you know, funny, blah, blah, blah. All these things. It's like a customizable. While you as a person are a customizable character. And just like in games, actually, you have to, you know, earn points and then you choose where you add them. And if I had to talk about ooh, full circle, if I had to think about things that, in, in my opinion, have a high ROI, right? Return on investment. Things that are put in the 30% that will yield you the 70% of results. Allocation. Is that a word? Shut up. No. Eloquence. Elo Allocation is a word. Whoa. 
Allocation is a word, a removal from the usual place of residence. Obsolete, departure from the usual state and ecstasy. Allocation. Ah, I was looking for the word eloquence. Right, eloquence. That, that captures all these different ideas. Eloquence is one of the thing. Blah, you see, eloquence is one of the thing. Blah, that th is so fucking annoying. The the is it's unnatural. I'm French. It doesn't exist in my language. I can't do it. The I used to just say the like a d. The but it doesn't like when you're saying the Thames. You can't say the Dames. Thames. Thames. Stupid ass language. Well, stupid ass me. The. The is annoying. I don't remember what I was saying, but. Eloquence. Important. Eloquence. Very important. One of those very important things. One of those very important things. Well, actually, in, in talking about exaggerating, I, I should practice actually exaggerating when I articulate my words exaggerating yeah that's what I should do yeah <laughs> this thing this thing from now on from from now on I am going to exaggerate my elocution is another word that's related to that right elocution Elocution, the skill or clear express... Wow, I can't even read. The skill of clear and expressive speech, especially of distinct pronunciation and articulation. <laughs> I'm based... This is a... This is me learning to speak English. I I've said that before, right? But now... I look like a guy who's just learning to speak English. For the first time. Fuck it. Elocution. Well, it's a good word as well. The skill of clear and expressive speech, especially of distinct pronunciation and articulation. Elocution. 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 That's what I'm talking about. That that's what this is about. Elocution. The skill of clear and expressive speech and expression and articulation was in there somewhere as well. Elocution. That's what I'm talking about. On that note, I'll do the this was a I won't finish that sentence. I'll do the poem again. Do I, do I remember it? I don't know. We shall see. So. Oh, my back. My shoulders. Climbing has destroyed me. Okay. All right. Hmm. Contemple les, mon âme. Ils sont vraiment affreux. Pareil aux mannequins, vaguement ridicules, terribles, semblables aux somnambules, dardant on ne sait où, leurs globes ténébreux. Leurs yeux, d'où la divine étincelle est partie, comme s'ils regardaient au loin, restent levés. Au ciel, on ne les voit jamais vers les pavés, penchés rêveusement, leur tête apesantie. Ils traversent ainsi le noir illimité, ce frère du silence éternel, ô cité, pendant qu'autour de nous, tu chantes, ris et beugles.
et prise du plaisir jusqu'à l'atrocité. Vois, je me traîne aussi, mais plus que hébété. Je dis, que cherche-t-il au ciel Tous ces aveugles. Like I said last week, it's like being in a trance. My grandpa knows really long poems. That was be. Actually, that's what... Stop. So we'll do this again. Articulating. Actually, that is what being an actor is. Or like a stage actor, when you have these long monologues and you're reciting them. It's, it's this same feeling, but, well, you're actually acting, and it's much longer. I need to start learning longer poems. Doucement mais sûrement. We say in French, slowly but surely. We say in English, so I don't know why. I don't know why I said it in French first. <sighs> this episode is... Um, Finished, isn't it? It is finished. This episode is finished. This episode is finished. But so what I... Next episode will start like this. <laughs> we, like... <laughs> we hired... You know, we hired a private in investigator to to follow me for a week and we paid him no and we told him we'd give him two thousand pounds bonus if he were to find proof that I am an alien isn't that ex no <laughs> like that, that's one of those you know Openings. We did this, we did that. And it's so exciting. We bought a hundred balloons and we attached my phone to them and we threw them out the window. And my mission is to get them back using my jetpack. Another one. This room. No. In 24 hours, this room will, will be filled with balloons and you know, I don't know I don't I don't watch enough of these videos or start with a zoom on me uh, I don't have the energy hi guys no no but maybe no you know there's a there's a space in between in between monotonous and crazy that's the space I'm supposed to occupy probably yeah I've probably mentioned that before looking at people well people that I look up to right who are good orators how they start, how they do their thing. Because for this to be successful, in fact, this series of videos, for it to be successful, it has to bleed into my, my life. Uh, it's funny to think about. For this to be successful, once again, since it's a video on YouTube, stands to reason that for it to be successful, it needs to gain views and you know, the channel to gain views, etc. But that's not the case. For this series of videos that I'm putting on YouTube publicly to be successful, I need to hear, be less monotonous, become a better orator. I need, in this space, in this moment, I need to, you know, exaggerate and speak in this way to kind of open myself up 
or I need to do this here. And then I need to let that kind of energy permeate my life, so to speak. I need to let that energy and that way of expressing myself creep into my self outside of this. I'm thinking of specific people right now whom I won't mention. But I'm thinking of some really good orators. And it seems like there are people who they kind of put an act on when they are performing. Well, when they're, they perform, right? There are people who are performers. Like, we all know of famous people who are great performers, but they're introverted. They're actually quite uncomfortable with the idea of being famous and being on stage. So they, they, they adopt this persona when they are performing, but that's not who they are outside of it. And that doesn't appeal to me at all, right? I'm not looking to become a performer. I don't think. I want to just be a good orator. And that's what I want. So it's funny because I have to use this opportunity here, this one hour a week, to build myself up in, in a weird way, almost to build a character, it seems, right? I have to push the boundaries, in a weird way, of how I express myself, how to push, so that once I turn the camera off and I'm not in this space anymore, I've pushed enough before that so that this energy and even a sense of comfort in being that more maybe extroverted person stays with me so that at some point in the future I won't have to kind of turn that character on when the camera turns on. That will just be me all the time. Which, it, it kind of sounds weird because you might think about, once again, about famous YouTubers who are, oh yeah, you know, you know. That's not my point. My point is I need to be eloquent, you know. There's another one. Oh, I forgot. Memory, that's not a thing I need to work on. Memory. Elocution, right? But then how do you use that word? In, in, anyways, I need to be eloquent. Fuck, I, I forgot why, why I went this way. Doesn't matter. I need to push when I'm here. Push too far, perhaps. So that when I'm not in this mood, in this, uh, in this space anymore, I've, I have practiced pushing and I'm more comfortable with doing it on a daily basis. So that weekly I do this thing where I record myself and I am good at doing it. I'm not eloquent. My, my, my ideas are flowing. I'm fluid in my delivery. Then I turn the thing off and I go about my day and I'm fluid in my delivery and I'm eloquent. That's just who I am. And I must have watched at some point, same, one, two months ago, a video that was talking about flirting, I think, or talking to the opposite sex. Or, oh, no, 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 it was by, I think it, I think it was by Charisma On Demand. And it was about Charisma, I think, I think it was something like that. And one thing that he says, I'll go straight to the, the, the point, the thing he says. You have to be flirting with everyone all the time. Basically, that's what he says. The point is that if you're always flirting with everyone, which sounds weird, but if you're always like that, then it's never going to be difficult to flirt with someone you actually want to flirt with. Now, that sounds weird because, you know, why flirt with someone you're not attracted to? Too. But the point is not the point of flirting is more being playful and being open and essentially this idea that oh here's someone that I find attractive, how do I talk to them, right? That's a problem that many people face. I included. Right? You, that's how we feel. And then there are other people 
we're not necessarily attracted to, the, attracted to them. And so we don't really ask ourselves how to speak to them. We might just ignore them, right? But the idea is that you should be, you should be open to the world, basically. You should be someone who's open and who goes towards people and interacts with them just because, you know, just because that, that feels good. And so when you find, when you meet someone on the street randomly that you're not attracted to, you just have a con- conversation with them. You might learn something. You might, you know, they might say something nice to you. You might say something nice to them. Might be, might be a good, a memorable, positive thing in your day. And then when you meet someone you're attracted to, there's no worry or no, you know, there's no, you don't ask yourself how to interact with them because that you just interact with everyone with ease. And so when you approach them, you flirt with them easily and you are open with how you feel easily, right? That was the point. Just like this idea of to love anyone, you have to love everyone. It's, a, man, it's somewhat similar. But so to me, that makes a ton of sense because just like I might struggle to interact with someone I'm attracted with, I also struggle to interact with everyone, right? That's just a reality for me. So, but that's because in a way, I think to myself, oh, here's someone, well, no, it's not because of that, but a problem, a thing that needs to be fixed is that, oh, here's someone I'm attracted to, I'd like to talk to them, and, you know, yeah, I'd like to talk to them, interact with them, because I'm attracted to them. And then here's someone I'm not necessarily attracted to, I'll just ignore them. And that's not that that that's not a good way to approach life. And that does really make sense. Because as I've found out many times before, everyone you meet has something to offer. Even in a very short interaction. Everyone you meet, you know, has <laughs> I thought about the funniest thing to say at the end. Everyone you meet has an inner glow. Yeah, I said that. But you get the point. Everyone you meet actually has something to offer. And something to offer sounds a bit strange. I just mean something positive about them. Something, you know, that could that could benefit you, even in a small way. And once again, I'm reminded of that every day. When, for example, there's a guest at, at, uh, at work that seems a bit... Um, uh, that seems a bit closed off or sh- shut, shut off. Like, they don't want you to interact with them. Right? For example, a guest like that. And I'm like, they just give off that vibe. And so I don't make any effort to, you know, kind of converse with them. And at some point I will. And oh, wow, they're very interesting. Wow, they're very willing to have a conversation. And, you know, systematically this has happened, you know, week after week, day after day. Because people have a lot to offer. They just do. All of them. Yes. And so in the same way, I need to be a person that's full of love, that loves people because that, well, because that, uh, that contributes to me being better at love, at loving specific people, the, my family, etc. In the same way that I need to be more extroverted, in the world as much as I'm trying to be extroverted here in the same way I need to you know to be open to speaking to people as if I were actually attracted to them right I need to speak to any stranger as if I was attracted to them because if I wasn't so blind right? If I wasn't so stifled, if I didn't have all these barriers blocking my sight, I would be attracted to them. Once again, this sounds strange, not in a romantic way, but I'll think, look at this, you know, that's a, that's a 40 year old woman. It's like, she's been living in the world for 40 years. And I don't know, she's Chinese and she's tall and she's wearing glasses and she has a suitcase it's like that's amazing that that should be amazing it's like why why does she have a suitcase where is she going she knows a million things i don't know you know and i could have said here is a 
16 year old you know pink skin orange hair you know overweight kid and he's got you know a school bag that's amazing right that is it's like what he knows a million things i don't what is your experience as a 12 year old british boy going to school you know are you skipping oh you're skipping school what is your experience right that is amazing and that is like well that is amazing that sounds so crazy but that is that kid knows a million things i don't that kid that kid has experienced things he's had thoughts ideas he's seen things he's wanted things he's learned things and if i approach that kid right with this that that energy of knowing that the same way i would approach a beautiful girl because i think she's attractive if i approached him like kid i want to know what you know you're interesting you know tell me more if i did that then that would be a good thing i would learn things blah 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 I think I'm done. I'm hungry. Mission accomplished. Mission a accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah, finito.